Joining us right now in an exclusive interview is Lee Cooperman. He's the chairman and CEO of Omega Family Office. And Lee, good morning. We, we haven't gotten the chance to talk to you since all the turmoil that broke out in the banking industry. W what do you think is happening right now? Well, I think uh, we're finding it's much more difficult to get out of QE than we realized. We've had irresponsible policies for a decade of uh, zero interest rates, which has led to a lot of inappropriate behavior. I did not forecast the banking crisis, but I did say in our last appearance that this will end with some kind of crisis. Uh, it usually does. And that we had the banking industry, and we've had the predictable response by government to that crisis. And uh, I suspect long-term consequences are going to be more negative than positive, mainly because I'm a, I'm a free market capitalist. And I have to say that if the government is going to be looked upon to modify downside risk for companies, the government has every right to modify the upside return. So the government's going to get more into our pants than uh, I'd like to see. Do you see this spreading um, beyond the banking sector in, into other arenas? And how, how long do you think this plays out if you're talking about long-term consequences? Well, I, I think it'll, come, it'll spread into commercial real estate as banks become more reluctant to lend. And that seems to be the whipping boy right now. We'll survive this. You know, generally, market bottoms are made on bad news, not tops. So I'm not surprised about the rally, but I think it's kind of running its course. You, you've been concerned. The last time we talked to you, you, you worried that you could be stealing seven years or more returns that we've already seen and that the next seven years might not be so great. You still feeling that way? Yeah, yeah I'm not a, a big reader of the Bible. Uh, I, I am a God-fearing person, you know, uh, but I basically cited uh, the Pharaoh's dream, which was interpreted by Joseph, as indicative of my thinking, and that is we would have seven lean years following seven fat years. I think price earnings ratios are heading a little bit south. Uh, I, th I, w I thought that the combination of lower oil prices, the combination of high oil prices and QE, uh, Fed tightening, uh, and the strong dollar would lead us into some kind of recession, which would give us a final bottom later this year in the market. I think the back down of oil prices and the weakness of the dollar might extend the runway a little bit. But yeah, I have a ca an overall cautious view because I think we've had the economic mismanagement for quite some time, and uh, we still have it. And this whole energy crisis uh, could be dealt with if we just gave some economic incentives to the oil companies to produce, rather than trashing them. And the uh, same thing, you know, I've had this... I, I've studied stock repurchase for a long time, and I happen to be a great admirer for, for good reasons of Warren Buffett. And he says, if you don't understand stock repurchase, you're an economic illiterate. And so we've had a lot of or a illiterate... demagogue, I think he said. <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah, I think he said, or a demagogue. There's an adjective Either for the demagogue, too. A silver tongued demagogue. Yeah, I think. that was it. Yeah. The, the basic point is, is the government is getting involved in business in a way that I think is unhealthy. You know, stock repurchase is just another use of capital by business. So, you know, you have to judge that use of capital as you would judge their decisions to invest in CapEx, MA. Stock repurchase, dividend payments, etc. It's another use of capital. And you got to decide whether the companies are in a better position to make that allocation or the government. And I would think companies are in a better position to make that decision. You got to decide whether you're, you know, free market or whether you're uh, looking for a controlled economy. And I think, you know, we have the economic system of the envy of the world. And yet we have a bunch of politicians that don't really see it that way. But I, getting back to my market view, I, I think that we've had irresponsible fiscal monetary policies for a long time. Uh, I mean, uh, we were buying mortgages when house prices were running ahead 30 percent. That made no sense. And all of a sudden, we woke up to the inflation problem. 64 percent of a typical business cost is labor. And with 1.7 jobs available for everybody seeking a, a job, it's not an environment where labor is going to moderate its demands greatly. So I think inflation is going to be higher than we think. Um, and I said this in my last appearance. I have no particular insight, but I don't think Al or me or anyone knows how high interest rates have to go to stem economic growth. You know, um, I grew up in a business where there used to be a real return when you bought a 10-year bond. That the return equaled or exceeded nominal GDP. So if you say inflation 
of 4% and real growth of 1.5%, it's 5.5%. So I don't look at interest rates at 3.5% being too low.